<laughs> Cattle it. Oh, look at that moon. Leaving town, heading to you, Sargoon, halfway point. Beautiful moon. It's uh, not coming down anytime soon. <laughs> and it is about 6.30 in the morning. No, 7 now. 7.30 nearly, sorry. Hello. Good morning, everyone. It is the 19th of September. Currently, it is 10 degrees, going for a top of 24 degrees. 7.30 in the morning. Look at that. I'm pretty happy because we are going to reach Sargoon in 22 kilometers and that means we are halfway. That was the sunrise and this is the moon still lingering in the big sky of the Meseta. I'm excited because halfway means I'm halfway completed to my goal of reaching Santiago. Such a great feeling. Oh, check in later. Have a good one. I love Fontanas, you see. Yeah. <laughs> Did she say that? That's funny. Yes. No, but she was like a criticism. She said, you know, some people just go through it. And yeah. Oh, it's so beautiful. Margaret and I have decided to take the alternate route, really well path marked, so it's not off course. Because we're just a little bit more rustic, <laughs> but just a lot more beautiful because we just don't want to be walking along the traffic road, which is very annoying. More sunflowers waiting to be harvested. Now I understand that the Spaniards are addicted to sunflowers, as one viewers have informed me. I understand why now sunflowers are left to bow their head in crispiness <laughs> because they get harvested for seeds and for oil um, and there's so many sunflowers in northern Spain it's because the Spaniards love them love sunflower seeds I had some the other day with Sam and Danielle two fellow pilgrims from Australia and uh, they said they have made a dent um, into the bag but then somehow they never made a dent because there was so much of it in one bag Suddenly appear every time you are near. Can you hear the birds? Doo -doo. I wish these were edibles because I'm starving. So hungry. Oh, it's like this force fed intermittent fasting that we have to do because cafes are not open. Oh, okay. It's really hard to pick up on video but look at the ploughed land you know rocks and rocks and rocks but ploughed and then and then you've got the moon that is trying to sneak away because the sun is chasing it with its sunrise up beyond and behind <laughs> ah it's a beautiful morning i love the Maseta. That's the media headline for today. I love the Masetta. Wanna see it? Are you going back to Sunset? Uh this yeah. way. That yeah, mm -hmm. when did you start? Pierre de Bois. Hmm? Oh uh, Pierre de Bois. Yeah. What Pierre date? Date? French. French Pierre de French, Bois. French, French. Yes. Oh yeah. you you started on Saint Jean Peter yes. Port yeah. and then you walked to Santiago okay. and then you turned back again. Yes. Yeah. How many days will that take? Maybe two months. Two, yeah, months. two months, okay. Yeah. And are you retired? No longer working? Uh, Your children are old and you yeah, are sometimes uh, maybe have a test. Yeah. Have a chance to yeah. have a test, uh, have a test, uh, maybe one day, two day, okay, go have a rest, okay, yes. okay. Yeah. Well, and, and you're doing this because of you of religious reason, yes, yes, yes. Are you a Catholic? Uh, something no. else, something yeah. else, okay, okay, yeah, well, okay, yeah. all right, Jajen and uh, Shesheni, Shesheni, Buon Camino. Two roads divided. Slightly longer, but nicer. Uh, 
Just how beautiful is this? The colours, beautiful, the clouds, so dramatic. And look, little puffs of white making it look like a wig on Bridgerton. <laughs> That's what it looks like. Those little touches of white clouds um, buried in the grey wispiness of those clouds looks like Queen Charlotte's wig. Anyways, I'm just a bit nuts, but I can't get over how beautiful the Masetta is. We believe there's going to be rain in the afternoon. Oh, look! Sorry. Can never really capture the beauty of a sunrise or a sunset, but I can certainly try. Look at, look at the clouds. So, so good. So nice. I love a sunburnt country. I'm going now to recite from memory a poem that I learned as a child about Australia. I thought that I might share this for my fellow Australians and anyone who has visited Australia as well as my Spanish community on here. It goes, it starts, it's titled <laughs> A Sunburnt Country by Dorothy McKellar. Ready? I love a sunburnt country, a land of sweeping plains, of rugged mountain ranges, of droughts and flooding rain. I love her far horizon, I love her jewel sea, her beauty and her terror, the wide brown land for me, core of my heart, my country, something, 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 something. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I can't remember the second verse, but that's it, a sunburned country. And I think when I was living outside of Australia for the couple of years that I was working as an expat overseas um, in uh, Asia Pacific, Southeast Asia, I always wanted to come home and I always think of that poem uh, around Christmas time. Yes. Anyways, I thought it might be apt to apply to this rugged landscape we have this morning. The truth of the matter is I'm actually thinking about coffee too. And I want to talk a bit more about coffee. I have started a ranking for coffee in Europe. And with Melbourne as the standard, sorry, it's true, Melbourne has the best coffee. We're not even considering Sydney or Queensland or Perth or Adelaide or um, Central Australia or the Northern Territory or Tasmania, but Melbourne. Then the second, and the second thing on the list is, okay, so the first thing is, I think in terms of coffee, at least Spain is better than France. <laughs> Spain is better than France at coffee with milk. A cafe con lache or cafe creme in France, um, or what they call a flat white in Australia. Okay, that's it for now. First Spain, second France. I have yet to try Germany and Italy. I have tried Italian coffee, but I need to, to do a refresher to really compare. Saw the most undead sunflowers ever seen on this trail. Look at the freshness of that yellow. Hello, undead. The side, the land of the zombies. Dead, dead, dead sunflowers. Alas, look. How fresh are these beautiful things? Why? Is this like new crops? Gosh, okay, all season? They have sunflowers all season? That is a steeple or a church bell. That also means coffee. We are 
in Ledegoss for coffee. <gasps> 373,870 k's to Santiago. We found a cafe. Yes. Let's go. I'm so tired. Barely had any sleep last night. We had a snoring locomotive train in our dorm. <laughs> It's diverted. Which one shall you take? Isn't there a Robert Frost poem about two roads in the road, um, two roads divided? It's amazing how quickly you warm up. I just took off my jacket and a mid layer, and I'm now really good because I don't have to peel off the layers. Whereas Mark right there is going to want to peel off that layer soon because it's really warm now. Oh goody, Margaret's decided to take her photos so I snickily went past her. This is my view now and not her backpack. <laughs> Woohoo, that freedom. Look at those clouds, guys. I mean, what do they remind you of? Icebergs? Beautiful. Look at those colors. You cannot tell me the Meseta doesn't have colors. Come on. Look at the vastness. Look at the land of freedom and opportunity. <laughs> it's a great runway to what's to come, is it not? Ooh, Margaret hasn't caught up. Oh, I must be so fast this morning because that woman's a machine. <sighs> Meseta. Said, why do people scared of you? You know, I think I think it's a wonderful place. I think people actually come back and just walk the Pesetta, just that section. Now I understand why. I think the Pyrenees and the Meseta so far have been my favourite. Obviously, when I went up the Pyrenees on the 29th of August, that was like the storm, remember? And then since then, they haven't had any, so I think we were pretty unlucky. So in some ways, I kind of want to go back to that first stage from St. Jean Port P. Sorry, St. Jean Peter Paul. <laughs> and um, do that whole section of the Pyrenees again. Of course, I will be much fitter now than I was then. Um, and I know better. I keep thinking of that man with the truck, the shepherd that sells those beautiful um, lambs or sheep cheese. I mean, I was eating that coming down the forest, if you remember, and it was crumbly and salty and, and textured, and it's just delicious. It's like so organic can smell the grass in that cheese. Today I am thinking about my parents and what it means to be uh, in the sandwich era. You know, the era where you're, you've got kids still to try and raise well, although my kids have just hit adulthood, but you know, it, you can never take your eyes off, I guess. Still there for them as a consultant rather than a parent now. But then you've got older parents who are advancing in age. And I'm thinking about my parents because they're really good parents. They, they were young when they got married and young when they had children. So in some ways, I don't think, you know, we got, we were, got the consulting that we, that I, I think, am providing my kids if they ask. And sometimes when they don't ask, because, when I was needing advice, I think they were just struggling to put food on the table because we were refugees in a new country. So no blame there, I think. But, you know, despite that, myself and my four brothers were able to survive. 
um, and I think enjoying moderate success in some ways. I'm very grateful for my parents, for example, I'm away and they're checking up on my house and you know, I'm sure mum's cleaned my fridge because she can't help herself. And my dad, he loves watering the garden, so <laughs> I'm sure he's watered every single plant in the garden, which is much more than I do in a month or a year. <laughs> he loves water. His name is Water, so there you go. Anyway, mum and dad, if you are watching my videos, you probably are falling asleep through this, but if you are, hello! I'm alive but I'll be home soon and then we'll have dinner okay and thank you so much for looking after my stuff and worrying about me I know but I'm okay I'm good and I'll see you soon as for my kids actually mum and dad look out for my kids I know they're busy with study not as responsive on text but that's okay because I guess when you're at that age, you really don't want to hear your mum's voice. And I think in some ways, me being away is kind of good that I'm not in their face too much and not always hovering over them. So yeah, that's it, really. I wish I can eat these because they're everywhere here. I really want to do another segment of eight ways with X berries and I remember the one I did I think about oh several episodes ago now about eight ways with blackberries from the Camino well you can't really eat these so I can't do them <laughs> otherwise I would eight ways to eat blackberries go and search I think it might be near the Zubiri one I'm not sure but yeah it was fun to do I can't eat these so so yeah I remember now it's like it goes two roads diverted in the wood and I, I take the path less travelled and that has made the difference. So which of these three roads in this intersection should I take? Well obviously it's this one. The wind obviously comes from that direction over there because look it's all side swept like a fringe. There's nobody here. I am all alone for this short minute. Margaret is just around the corner. She's probably taking more photos. I just love the colour palette, okay? This is the reality of the situation here is the colour palette of the Masetta is akin to a muted summer day. It could also be late evening in spring, you know, when that light is a little bit softer and the green comes up quite vividly against the 50 shades of beige. And look, there's a church yonder. You know what that means? Coffee, another one. the signage of this town. There's that sign, in case you didn't get it, there's another one here, and in case you don't get it, there's another one, all pointing towards this very obvious built-up area called town. Three signs towards town. Three signs towards Santiago. Don't get lost now, pilgrims. Ooh, fashion police on alert. Margaret sighted with a headscarf on. I believe I need to work a little bit on my headscarf game because that seems to be all the rage. Unfortunately, the buff, and not buff, by the way, it's called buff, um, invented by a very inspiring Spanish person. Um, the one that I got is rather dull in color. So I'm gonna try and get something like um, a blue one or even a green one to be that pop of color. Headscarf, Margaret. Thank you. Looking very much like, I don't know, 1960s on the Riviera. <laughs> Where did you get this one from? In the Philippines. The PI is represented here on the Camino. Hello to any Filipino viewers. <laughs> 
Welcome. Very excited because guess what? There's a three. Oh my gosh, we are so close. We are so close, my friends. Love. I'm sure this was in the way. Guys, I'm walking backwards for a little bit, not too long because I, I don't think I can sustain it because it actually works a different group of muscles. So I can see where I'm going. Ooh, it actually stretches out your calves. It's quite a nice feeling stretches out is it's just a different group of muscles just try it for like you know 30 meters every now and then okay let's, can't really sustain that to be honest yeah i think he i the last time i saw him um and so harold and rondo isn't it no oh gosh anyway um was before the Zubiri descent. So the producer, he had little stickers. Yeah, that's right. Oh, well done, you've kept it. Yeah. I have it too I somewhere. Had his number because I took a picture of him. Yes. On the road to Ransom's Pass. Is that really steep? Here yes. That come up? So, 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 Harold, if you're watching this video, which you may not, let us know if you're okay. The last time I saw you, at, I was at the Zubiri, just before the Zubiri descent, and you were thinking, it might be too much and I don't blame you because it was pretty aggressive. Ouch. Oh shit, I've just ow, I've just hit myself with my pole. What does that mean? Oh wish I had some breakfast. Cause now I'm really feeling it. Haven't had anything to eat. I think that the Mesetta is finally waking up because the sun is beating down hard. How many of you are thinking about doing the Camino in the coming months or potentially year? Put it down in the comment section. Let me know what season you're doing it in. I'm going to predict it's probably going to be either like May or in the June, July or in the September because they seem to be the most popular months. I wouldn't mind trying the Camino one day in winter, but I probably wouldn't do the old thing. I'll probably just do sections, I reckon, and just see what that's like when it's really, really cold. Um, I think if I was going to go in winter, probably will probably transport my bags because you'd probably end up having to carry a heavier sleeping bag. So, and more clothes. What's that, Margaret? So this is a memoriam for the Reverend Philip Wren, Methodist Pilgrim, died May 2013 on the way. Oh, may he rest in peace. Oh, that's so sad. That's really sad. Yeah, well, it is, it can be dangerous if you're not of the right health condition and you're not feeling well. So be wow, careful. There's a village coming up and we just saw the memori memoriam to Reverend Philip Wren, who passed away at that spot in 2013, which is very sad. And I think it's even sadder because he was so close, maybe so close to getting help because here we are, a mere, I don't know, 60 meters down the road is this village, see? And this village, I'm sure can help him. These are hobbit holes. This is what this village is offering in terms of uniqueness. Hobbit holes, let's go and have a look at them. It is the village of Moratinos. Check out this beautiful tree. It's got gold through green. And there's quite a few of them down the track. It's really nice and I don't know what tree it is, but I really like it. A closer look at the hobbit holes. Cute, hey? Very welcoming bar that has all these words that says breakfast in different languages and here we are. 
Is it open? Yes. We're just veering off track a little bit so we can check out these little hobbits home, which we found out are actually sellers to store wine. Yeah, La Boticas de Moratinos. No, the hobbits don't live here. These little caves are bodegas used in the past for food storage and winemaking. Moratinos is one of the several hillside bodega groups visible along the Camino de Santiago Trail, part of a wine culture that dates back 2,000 years to the Romans. How cool is that? Okay, the fields around you were once covered in vines and the caves were full of wine presses, barrels, massive clay vessels and bottling vats. Each family made wine enough each year to meet their own needs for the months ahead. There you go. So this is historical. Um, kind of cool. Yeah, I like it. Come along and look at this other one. It's a neat little place to store food and wine vats. And here's the third one. Cool, isn't it? This is the masthead for Spain. Yeah. Mm. The national papers. That's the local papers. Yeah. His first customer. Anyway, a freshly squeezed orange juice is something I haven't had for a while. Yum! Tartus Bravas, a lot of it. <laughs> has really ordered well again. She's got the eggs and the chorizo and is having a really good time with it. I have once again over ordered. I could, I could never eat a whole plate of potato Bravas, so I don't know why I keep doing this, you know? It's got a really lovely herb garden. There's Josh inside having a drink. And look at this, I don't know what this is, but I really like the fact that he's got a herb garden. Good little cafe operator. Very sustainable. Cute little sidebar. Nice cooking skills. This Go must here. be the albergue that my friend Susan is talking about. She says, Go say hello to Bruno. I went to the Italian Bruno. One in, I think it's St. Nicholas, it wasn't the right one. I think all this knitted thing is about, it's just scarves, I guess. There's no symbol, but... Oh, okay. Very cute. Aren't they lovely? Sounds of birds chirping is a really cute village. No Australia flag, what does that mean? <laughs> I need to stop eating patatas bravas. I just just need to stop because it's not fueling me in any ways. It's not helping my soft carp eating body in any way. I need to stop. I need to stop and eat more protein. Ten more, Ten more Ks, let's go. How good is that? Nine Ks to go. It was only 10.30 when we had kind of an early lunch, probably more as brunch. But anyway, it was a bar. So what do you do? You go in and I was going to order a sangria. In fact, I ordered sangria and then have this look for Margaret thinking, I'm not carrying you for the rest of the 10K. She knows I'm a lightweight after having spent a couple of days. And I think it's very easy um, to be an alcoholic in Spain because what are you doing during siesta? If you can find yourself a bar that opens, you have a drink. What, what do you do after you have come into the town that you're staying at, laundered, had a shower, you get a drink. What do you do at dinner? You have a drink. So at least three drinks, you know? So I think I need to um, snap out of it. 
cannot be drinking three drinks a day at home I barely drink one a week so let's get back into shape just carrying a Deuter very good German bag I think anyway um it's a French guy and uh, didn't catch his name. We really couldn't communicate. Uh, really friendly though. Um, I was able to ask him, hi, how are you? And that was it. And he asked me how my feet peed and how my legs are. And I says, good. And that's the extent of the conversation. Um, but he's done four Caminos. And he said, this one, he's only got two weeks to get to Santiago. Amazing. I'd love to be... A European person who can just fly in and out in a matter of a couple of hours and walk the way, you know? Hola. Hola. These guys just pop off and do their business. Whereas us women would have to find a much bigger tree than that, you know? A curvaceous hill and the trees that line it. The valley of the hills. An orchard of trees. Oh, bloody flies. So it looks like I'm um, down to the final stage of a job that I've been interviewing for whilst on the Camino. I didn't plan it, it just happened. Um, they've come back and asked for two references to do a reference check. So I think that's probably a good sign that I may have been successful. But you never know. In the meantime, I'm interviewing for another job that's come up but it, I always say to them look I can't do um, interviews while I'm walking so the earliest chance you can do the interviews at 6 a.m my time Spain time which is about 2 p.m Melbourne time and they've always been able to comply so that's good um, yeah so it looks like I have to find two references which I do have already I've got three in fact and pass it on today I'll keep you posted but it looks like I'll have a job by the time I get back to Melbourne mid-October, which is nice. I guess that means that I don't have to be so frugal with my spending. Um, having said that, though, I still want to be very careful about because um, it's not guaranteed. And it's cost quite a bit, actually, to come to Spain from Australia and then travelling for six weeks. So see how it goes. Well, Margaret has definitely gone on ahead and um, I'm a bit slower because I've been, you know, taking footages and that kind of stuff. But um, what I'm trying to say is the meseta is very hot. So please be careful, um, have enough water and uh, reapply sunscreen. I had my sunscreen, I think, either lost or so packed, so down in my pack that I couldn't be bothered taking it out. Thankfully, Josh, who works in Washington, um, and who Margaret met last night, walked into the bar and said that he had some. So I was able to apply a citronella scented sunscreen onto my face and arms and I think I should be set for the next 9k. It is actually quite easy to have heat stroke and there's nobody behind and nobody in front of you so just be very very careful. I kind of want to walk a little bit faster because there's a couple of guys behind me and I don't have any female companions with me and you know two blokes I don't know maybe I'm stereotyping but there's definitely going to be making commentary about my legs or my body because I'm wearing shorts and I just don't like that so time to speak. So up. we've arrived at San Nicolas del Rio Camino town I don't think it's a very big town but let's head off back on the trail I'm going straight to Saun. Good. there's the arrow keep going <laughs> Oh, okay, enjoy. <laughs> Sargoon, six kilometers. For those at home, it's pretty much my house to Glen Ferry Road and back. So let's do this. Guys, 
here's how you pass a fellow pilgrim, okay? Watch this. Buen Camino. Hope you're okay? I try to look at their face to make sure they're okay. But most of the time they are and just focus on their thing. Many people have passed me, believe me. And they do the same. A glance, maybe the eyes will meet. Just to make sure that everything's okay. God, it's hot today though. We're entering the province of Lyon. Here we go. That's a huge landmark. Whew. So this is saying the Camino de Santiago is a deep water. We have just gone through Palencia, yeah? And now we're leaving it to the province of Lyon. People leave things here to memorize their loved ones. Grocery beads, names on rocks. Yeah. yeah, and tomorrow we do that route to Albergo Renero. Yes. And then Manzia, the Las Mulas, and then Entonces Leon. There's a town up ahead that we're stopping at. Barely any shade. It's very, very warm. You need a white hat, brim hat. Paul Margaret's wearing my hat, and I think her ears are going to burn. Another pilgrim resting. Yeah. Two more Ks. My feet are killing me. It's so sore. Although I put in a layer of insole. Ouch. Beneath this smile is a lot of pain. My feet hurt. Ow. Oh my god, how long to go? Don't let these pretty flowers fool you. The path is still very hard on your feet. Very picturesque. However, don't let it fool you. It seduces, but it will cause you grief. See, he's got ankle covers which remove the stones the brace and I'll light that back woohoo we're here sort of <laughs> we have arrived Saagun look at this bridge and see that two stones that's the official halfway mark guy Just Leon now. Oh, stonework. Look at this nook. I like a nook. Beautiful cobbled web stones, ancient pathway, really cute. Still surviving little chapel. I like it. It's neat. Look at the brickworks. Look. How beautiful is that? And this bell, I hope it's actually got a rope attached to it. Look at this door. Oh, it's such a cute piece of landmark, I think. Resting areas. Saagun Centro Geografico del Camino. Look at that beautiful motif. Hello, who is this lovely man? This is where most people would stand for halfway. What does that say here? Camino de Santiago. Look at that, I know. The Knights Templar. What a handsome warrior. Right, let's do you before anybody else. Okay, do you? okay so we are stepping past stepping past the halfway mark. 
stepping past the halfway mark. <laughs> Made it! Halfway, guys, halfway. Flies. Off we go. Seems longer than 22 k's today. But I think it's because we actually went the alternate route to escape the highways. A well-known alternate route, not, you know, off the path. So that we get more greens. That I think we have added more k's. Because my feet are telling me we've done more than 22 k's today. But guys, how good is that that we have reached halfway? I can't believe I have walked half of northern Spain half of a country and what a lovely little gateway the two statues one of a scholar I think and the other one of a warrior and um, I took a photo a selfie with both of them because I thought they were such fine statues I'm going to send the one with the Knights Templar to my kids because I remember telling them some stories about the Knights of the Templar you know I think King Arthur and all them I'm sure they were Knights so yeah it's so fantastic to come back to one of the birthplace of the Knights Templar. So cool. Oh, feeling very elated, very happy, very satisfied. I've achieved something. Not completely, but I'm halfway there, and that's good enough for now. Still quite a long way since the halfway mark. Give love to life, and you will know the answer. Okay. Martin Sheen. Mine's eight minutes. They obviously celebrated the movie. That's cool. Nice. I'm going to get a lovely stamp for halfway, everyone. Look at this. Gracias. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm going to go here to get my halfway compass. Tourism stamp. office in Sargun. Tourism office in Sargoon, you can definitely get a beautiful stamp. It's not where you get the halfway compass dollar though, so they'll tell oh you. My god, we're here, I'm here, I'm here. This has been exhausting. This is where I'm staying, guys. The courtyard's here. And watch the step. Your shoes go here. Okay. And there's the hand washing. Oh, thank you. Right. And then oh. get it up early. With Benedictine nuns, and um, it sounds amazing. I think I'm going to go to the pilgrim mural, isn't it? There's heaps of. It's a quite a centrally located place. Oh wow! This is a lovely monastery. Stained glass windows. You know how much I love them. The shower splashes at this albergue, so now I'm going to have to mop the floor so that nobody slips. I am heading up to this building to get my halfway Compostela. Isn't that cool? Excited. I'm not feeling great, but I am going to get this certificate. The lands of the Leonessa, so it's Leon of mm -hmm. Chagun, mm -hmm. geographical centre of the Camino de Santiago Frances. Um, I don't know what that means. Uh, mm. So good. Flash photography is not allowed. Look at those Your windows. This must be where people stand to read. See, I'm telling you. The Virgin Mary is so well represented. She pretty much is the key figure of the Camino, Francis. 
I think that's wonderful. She deserves it. I mean, where else are you going to get women being elevated like this? Seriously, the Camino is all pretty much about the Virgin Mary. Yes. He kept him away from women because he had a physical presence that suggests that he was good looking. Oh, a physical presence. <laughs> oh my goodness, look at the lace and the stonework of this. So it's actually stone, but you can, it's lace. I'll zoom in. Like little doilies. Isn't that amazing? You guys have got to come and see this for yourself. <laughs> Do you think it's made out of stone or something else? I'm here with Stephen from US. Um, Steve, how's your Camino experience so far? Very good, very pleasant. A lot of great uh, pilgrims that I'm meeting. The weather is fantastic, enjoying it very much. Oh, that's good. Any advice for anyone that wants to do the Camino? Take your time, enjoy it, be in the moment. Okay, and uh, how many Caminos have you done so far? This is my third. Oh, amazing. But the first from St. Jean. Uh, the first time I went from Astorga, which is about a quarter of the way. Yeah. The second time from Lyon, which is a little less than halfway. Yeah. And now that I'm retired, I'm doing the whole thing. Oh, you're amazing, Steve. You're Thanks. very fit. Um, do you have a favorite like part of the Camino that um, you want to share with us? Uh, I enjoy the Meseta very much. Isn't that interesting? A lot of people don't like it. Correct, but yeah. I do. It's flat. Yes. Easy to walk. Yes. And uh, you can meet more people and uh -huh. talk to them as you walk. Yes. So yes, I enjoy that very much. Okay. Uh, one last question. Yeah. What's your favorite piece of gear in your pack? My one or two. Piece of gear. Yeah. I would have to say my uh, sleeping bag uh, liner. Oh. It keeps me separated from the mattress and whatever else is there. <laughs> so yes. to speak. Yes. We don't really want to know. Yes, <laughs> exactly. So yes, yeah. that would be my favorite piece. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Steve, for doing the interview for me. Um, any last words before we let you go? Uh, bon camino. Oh, lovely. Thank you so yeah, much. That's, that's yeah. a great interview. Thank yeah. you. Uh, I think it's recording. <laughs> oh, it's recording. Oh. Oh, yeah, okay. That's nice, isn't it? Nice touch. How beautiful lit are these books? It's backlit. Yes. Or, or maybe just if the bookcases are lit. I really would love something yeah, like this. Huh? Top lit. Oh, yes, okay. LED. Yeah. That is such a nice atmospheric way of showcasing your books, I think. And these books are all holy books or books? Mm. Or actually, they kind of are everything. Let's see if there's a good testament there. These really old books. Santiago de Compostela. I love books in terms of even as a decorative thing. The history of Portuguese literature, that's so cool. Such a nice space, this. Love Sargoon, guys.
Yeah, they're really good little study nook. <laughs> a very modern space but then in juxtaposition with old. This is where I walked to today and stood right in the centre. It's the halfway point of the Camino. Supermarket visit my accommodation for the night. This is my bunk and it's got a really nice view. Kind of outside. I, I like it. I like a good window. That's a bathroom. So look at that. Hablando de la bendición será en dos partes. Eh, voy a leer la, la oración, tal vez en uh, distintos, uh, len distintas lenguas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Represented people. That's me. <laughs> Look at this, all these pins. Oh my goodness, so many from. That... Okay. Europe? So many from the United States and Canada. This is a great map. Look at how many. When I put it in. Bon appetit! Pea soup, salad. This is a communal meal, everyone. San Antonio. Oh, wow, okay. So hungry. Such a good cook of food. Todo otra gente también tiene que poder ser. Sí, para hacer la oportunidad. Claro, yo soy peregrino. Sí. Yo tengo caminos. Y después de hacer el camino, siempre me llamó la atención la figura del hospitalero, ¿no? la persona que te acoge, que te atiende. Y me ha recibido gente tan bonita y gente tan mala <risa> eh, que al final quise venir ¿vale? para ayudar yo como me gusta que me ayuden a mí. Para... Bueno, yo soy Marta de México. Me, but since it falls unto my lot that I should rise and you should not, I will gently rise and I'll softly call 
Good night, and joy be with you all. Oh. the most beautiful <laughs> donativo.